Hey guys, welcome again. This time I'm coming to you with a replay of one of the games with a free player game. And this game uh, comes from uh, the handbook for the free player game, uh, written by one, one of the best players on board game, Rina Pistoliero. Uh, he is also known as Gunslinger. He has two accounts, just like me. Uh, and both of them were like really high level at some point. He's a really, really good player. Uh, I've read most of the guide, I think, uh, and I don't necessarily agree with everything, but I think it's a good read if you are interested in strategy of Seven Wonders and free players. Uh, he's much better player at free player than I am at this point, I would say, uh, because I don't focus on free player that much. Uh, I mainly play four player, uh, and some of the stuff doesn't transfer at all to the four player. That's how rich Seven Wonders is. But a lot of this uh, is really great at seven players, uh, at three players, and uh, this game highlights like one of uh, his. Uh, this is an example taken uh, by him. There's a lot of examples in, in his analysis, and that's great. And if you love reading about it, it's like 170 pages. Uh, so that's like that's like a doctorate uh, in seven wonders three player game. Uh, and that's just for the free player. That's amazing. Like I'm still puzzled by, and I thank uh, Pistoliero here very much. He linked it to me uh, via private message. Just great, great stuff, great analysis. So nice to read. Uh, I will be going back to it and trying to to take everything from it that I can. So yeah, that's just pretty great. Uh, let's dive into this game. Um, this is not guess the move because I've seen parts of this game, so that wouldn't be fair, but I wouldn't guess at all. Like this is just amazing play. Uh, so here, uh, we are FSOs, of course, uh, FSS B, and just like spoilers, uh, if Pistriero thinks that you should always pick B on uh, all the great resources, so all FSS Alexandria and Halicarnassus, I agree with everything, and except sometimes I pick A, but maybe not in free players. Uh, always picks B on Rhodos, uh, A on Olympia. That's surprising, but uh, there is some very good analysis about that in his uh, in his book that I will link, of course, in the description. I will link uh, the book itself, the PDF, and the forum topic that you can discuss it in on Board Game Arena. Uh, on Giza, he suggests B. I disagree here, but uh, we agree both that Giza is the worst by far um, just the worst wonder I don't know <laughs> trash uh, maybe not trash but um, pretty pretty challenging and then uh, what are we left with we are left with um, Babylon Babylon B of course always B uh, and that would be all I think yes that would be seven wonders so let's get into this game Ephesus this is pretty challenging, as you can see, because we are not the only green player, because he is potential green. Uh, Colossus is always challenging, so we are like... Um, taken from, from his analysis, this is the worst wonder here. So th this should be a pretty challenging game, and as, as you can see, this game is stacked. All player above 400, all player excellent in free player games, so we will see. Okay, here, uh, this is lucky, I guess. Uh, we get the best card that can be offered to us, so Timberyard, of course. Uh, what can we wield from him? Uh, uh, I think one of the trading posts. We can we can get it back, or we can get a stone pit back from this. That would let us build this. And here, the first amazing play. Uh, Let's pause for, for a second, and I need to say it again. This game comes from me because of the Pistoliera, I really think. I hope he doesn't mind that I'm showing this, but I want to promote his book also and his work because it's amazing. And this game is amazing also. What would you play here? I, I'd say, okay, you can go full green, maybe, with this. Uh, maybe you can go uh, for the stockade, just to get red. Um, if you read the book, it's all about the red, basically, in free players. Except the parts where it isn't, uh, of course. But red is very, very dominant in free, free players, that, as I have always said. Uh, maybe you would uh, play Claypool just to get some more resources for uh, for the others, uh, for the other uh, red card. And maybe you would play Buff. But I really doubt that any of you would actually throw a card here. 
Uh, and I think that's that's like 100% correct play here. You throw a card. Uh, when, I, when I saw this, I was like, yes, you should do it. And the question to you, again, pause the video, think for a second, which card should you throw? Um, one, two, three, four, five, it should be Claypool. And that's just that's just so brilliant. That's that's like one of the best play I've seen. Like second second pick, throw a card, uh, just to screw your opponent. That's what's great about free players. That's what uh, my my uh, gameplay is missing from free player. I'm not that aggressive usually. I'm I'm just building stuff for myself. But actually, throwing here uh, means that he cannot build um, clay pit. Uh, cannot beat, build his first stage. Clay pit is not enough, uh, and he will be forced to take double clay potentially, or he can even not ever build it if he misses both caravan serai and double clay. That's just crazy when you think about it. But by doing this, we prevent him from ever building this stage, and that's that's pretty huge. Uh, okay, so throw. Throw clay. I love this play. I, I can't say you how much I rate this play. It's like 11 out of 10. Next level play. As you can see, he was like, build, throw, build, throw, and throw. Throw is 100% correct. Of course, building here gives you resources, gives you two gold because he will pay you, but it comes with a cost. Uh, and this is not a cost that Pistolier here is willing, willing to pay, but he's actually willing to throw, and that's just so good. And as you can see, it wouldn't give you two gold. It would give you one gold, uh, which is kind of significant, I would say, at, at the early stage. Okay, here, another very important part. Uh, you maybe could go for Orvain, but by going Orvain, you really enable this guy uh, to get uh, to, 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 to here. Like, suddenly... He doesn't need that much. Of course, he, he, he somebody still played clay pit, as will always happen in free player games. So that's not the end of the world, but still, um, this enables him more. If he gets uh, caravanserai, he is all set. For example, uh, you can maybe think about doing this, mm. and I I would actually think about doing this, but actually here uh, the scriptorium like. Uh, I think Pistolero correctly identifies here that uh, he's far away from red for now. And by the way, Pistolero's main motto throughout his book is that you should win a red at the end of uh, stage two. And I would agree with that. That's like a good, um, good bullet point to have in most of the uh, in most of uh, games. Of course, that's not the only thing that you're doing, but that's like that's a good uh, plan to go for. Uh, and um, the less the players, the more it matters, basically. So yeah, in free players, obviously, it's like the, the best situation to go for it. Uh, so here's Cryptorium. You can still wield Academy. Um, here, um, this is challenging because here, um, Pistoliero, spoiler alert, goes for Stone Pit to get to this stage. And that's good. That's pretty good. But on the other hand, um, I don't know what we are doing about Colossus. So far, he's doing pretty good. He, he got this, which was excellent for him. And he's in a prime position to get Caravanserai. He got this, which is not bad. And we are if we are building this, then we are actually helping him even more, potentially. And, um, yeah. Loom is to be considered so we can go green when it travels back. But I'm not sure. On the other hand, what is our plan with, uh, with stones? Like, will somebody buy stone? Uh, maybe on the other hand, if we build stone, a lot of people will buy the stone from us, potentially. I don't hate this play, and, but I wouldn't hate going for Loom here either. That's pretty solid as well. This could be expected. A lot of good players go for red. Um, here I kind of don't know, because... 
Like, uh, Pistoliero goes here for buffs, which will prove very useful. Like, very useful. Uh, but I, I don't know how much it was, like, uh, maybe not luck, but... Maybe it wasn't luck, maybe it's two thirds, but I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, Glassworks here is obviously terrible. Building a wonder... I don't know, we probably won't be able to buy a, a green card. Like, I wouldn't think that we should be able to buy a green card right now. Uh, but maybe he will build, build for us. A barracks, you pay two, sure, but you also like get don't get minus two, and you are still in contention for red, uh, which, which is huge. So I wouldn't mind buying barracks here as well. Uh, basically, a lot of good plays here. But but this will prove to be a very very good play. And here he bought it for us. I don't remember what he what his other options were, but this was poor. And here we are just buying red, uh, green, because we want something to, to go for. And this this is just very good. And then he goes goes for red. But obviously, if he bought it, he wouldn't have this red card to go for. Um, okay. Pause the video now and think about what the other great play from this hand is. And this, this is another example from, from his book. Uh, this is just amazing, amazing. And the play here, uh, usually like you are in green, right? Naturally, you will, you will go for library. Um, maybe you have some kind of plan with red, so maybe you will just hide red. Maybe you will, I don't know, um, build um, build a wonder state? No, I mean, probably you, you are thinking green, right? Let's go for green before they take it away. Uh, but actually, Pistoliero hides the quarry here. Um, and this is pretty risky, I would say. But it pays off. And it pays off uh, doubles, like, first. By doing, uh, by doing this, it means that they need to buy um, stone stone from us, and he cannot finish his first stage. And by crippling both of their uh, first stages, uh, he gets so much ahead. Basically, he can do stuff and they can't. They need to like pause in this round to be able to play instead of just playing their best cards, um, or just like doing this in a convenient manner. Why this is risky? Because if he gets Caravan Sarai, uh, this is just bad. And this just mm, makes it so we cannot buy walls. He will still be able to buy walls. Uh, he would be able to buy walls. And then we, are, we would be just the, the only guy without Caravan Sarai, without access to free stones which can prove difficult, even for a green strategy, because of the academy. This is in French, but this is okay. Uh, so, yeah. This, will, this was risky. This was like 50-50 here, because he might as well have Caravanserai and build it. But as you can see, Caravanserai is here. And he, he built the, the brickyard for this guy. But he already has caravans, right? So it doesn't matter. So now now this is this is a pretty pretty amazing play as well. Um, because mm, like naturally you would go for aqueduct here, right? This is a five pointer. But he actually goes for a dispensary. Uh, and mm, bets that one of these will will come back to him. And I think that's pretty great. Um, I would actually think that this can still get back to him. Like, I don't see this guy tripping over himself for dispensary. But that there will be a lot of green on the next hand, which we'll need to buy two cards of. So, yeah. Aqueduct here. Uh, I wouldn't hide Aqueduct here, actually. 
like card house can still be pretty good. And yeah. So here dispensary, but I I think it's it's a solid play. But like this guy can still buy it for two gold, but maybe he will not have as much gold. And then he gets gets into red, which is good because he's winning against well, Colossus is toast. Like he has no access to to his wonder status. He's just out of the out of the race. Here I would one hundred percent go for school instead of the lab. But I think he goes for the lab just because of finishing sets. Uh, I, I I don't know really like. I can see a point that actually getting a lab here means that maybe he cannot bury school, buy school, but he can bury school anyway. So I would rather have school and just go for the doubles in the in the in the last round than have lab and pay for it now. But we have a lot of gold, so we can waste some. This is not that much worse, but I would still go for school here. I don't think he wants. This goes as much. Here we of course go for library. We have five five greens already, which is amazing. Here we go aqueduct, which basically secures us the game. And this is another thing from his book that games are won in the around uh, H2. And I would kind of agree with that. H3 is just like seeing what happened after your strategy in the second round. And first round is just preparing for the second round. So the second round is the most important round in the game. Uh, here, I think he buys Glasswords, but I wouldn't. I would just buy Wonder Stage. By, by any means, this, this is just the play here, I would think. But we'll see. Like, we are still winning, so nobody will buy this from us, so we are just saving, I don't know, two gold here, and we'll see how much gold somewhere else. Uh, the spread, not terrible for us in the greens, so that's pretty lucky. Observatory here is the pick. I haven't seen the third round, so this is new to me right now. This is a gold guild for him. And... Okay, the... This got much worse, just because it may be worth 6 at best. Uh, I would 100% Town Hall here, so he saves 2 gold from this Glassworks. And we are basically erasing this guy right now. Yeah, that's under hate pick. Uh, here we cannot buy much. Uh, this costs us 6, and this costs us how much? Also six. Um, so uh, this wouldn't have helped. This is a pretty terrible pick. I'd actually hide something here. Uh, a palace, probably. Yeah, definitely a palace. Let's hide the palace. Yes, this will be worth six. Um, We do not have... Oh, this is pretty hard. Can we win red? Maybe we can win red. But I will actually... I think we are ahead enough. So I would just lodge here. Doesn't, that doesn't matter which one, to be honest. I, I will just lodge R in Versity here. And he actually goes for red. And he actually gets it. Wow. Well, that's pretty good as, as well. Maybe he counted. Could he could have? Because he could have played this instead of this. But we couldn't play this. So is this just a total misplay by, by his part? His part? He could have played this, right? It could would have cost two, but would have guaranteed him winning over us. Right. This was this cost him one. This cost him two. So this was just one gold less. 
And we couldn't ever build this, right? Because this is six gold. So yeah, just huge misplay, I think. I think we still would have won. But yeah, this is just capitalizing on, on their misstep. Of course, when you can win red like that, you, you do it. Basically make sure that they have zero points. Mm. Yep, and here just wonder stage first. Basically, this guy by building this red got nothing. He, he, this was like minus one play. Yeah, and we are finishing with, but we we won red, so that's like huge. But but uh, we would have still won with the greens if we lost red. But this this was like this was crazy. It could it, it could have lost us the game. I think this play, if he played correctly. So, some good play, some bad play <laughs> as well here. Uh, okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. I really recommend reading this book. It will be in the description. See you later. Bye.